I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. A spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> New world order. Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. Again. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi, everyone. You're watching uh, the Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm Johnny D, and I always sing this episode with my partner, Benoit, aka La Strada Miss Ben. Mine and you. Yeah, doing super great. You know what? This is the last uh, episode of season five yeah. with a special guest of music. Yes, uh, he is a family member of Survivor, but also is a, a member of the Eyes of March. I'm of talking about uh, Mr. Jim uh, Peter. How's you going today, my friend? I'm do I'm doing great, uh, Jonathan and Benoit. Uh, thanks for having me on, and. Well, um, that's super, it, that, it's, that's it's no problem. super great that you accept our invitation. We know that you are very busy with a uh, concert, a uh, musical project, recording, and stuff like that. And we're going forward with the first question. So go ahead, my friend. I'm going to start the interview. Yes. Okay, Mr. Peter Rick, at what age did you start playing music? Music? Playing music? Oh my God, I was four <laughs> years old, and wow. um, yeah, I was uh, sitting in the back seat of our our family sedan, and okay. my two sisters are quite a bit older than me, and they taught me how to play ukulele, and we're going down to Florida through the Smoky Mountains, and uh, you okay. know, I, my hand just about barely wrapped around that ukulele neck, but. <laughs> A few years later, I realized, hey, wait a minute. There's this thing called a guitar, and it has six strings, not four strings. And my dad bought me a little crummy guitar, and I okay. figured out what to do with those other two strings. And I started making simple chords, you know, G, C, D. <laughs> and all you need is like four chords, and, and, and uh, I was off and running. Wow. And um, how many years have, uh, have you been colliding guitars? Because we know that you have a, a, a few uh, guitars. You know? Yeah, I have, I have a few. Uh, I've uh, pared it down from 240 to 200 guitars. Um, wow. Yeah, I decided, <laughs> to, uh, decided to give away <laughs> or to charity or sell. Some of the okay. ones that were fancy, but they weren't collectible and valuable. So mm -hmm. now it's down to 200, you know, extremely, you know, valuable Gibsons, you know, like Les Pauls and, uh, of course, Gretches and Fenders. And, you wow. know, it, it's, it's funny. I never even started really collecting. I just knew every time I bought a guitar, even when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. I couldn't bear to sell it. <laughs> and before you know it, I had a collection, and um, that's my hobby and, and my passion, really. And uh, go. Yo, okay, all right. Uh, can you tell us about the formation of the Eyes of March? Oh, that's one of my favorite my favorite memories and favorite stories. And okay. now, sixty years since we formed, we're still together. The same original four guys. You yeah, just met yeah. Larry Millis, leader of the band. And of course, Jim Peterick, Bob Berglund on bass, and Mike Borch on drums. That we call them the core four. We're still together uh, after 60 years, still best of friends, which is rare in, in any business, you know, to still hang out together. Even when we're not doing a show, we'll get together. And then Scott May, who you, you communicated with. Yeah. He's not only uh, our PR person, but he was, he's was he been with the band now for 33 years as our keyboard player. Wow. He's, he's the new guy. 
you know. <laughs> yeah. The young girl. The, the young guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, Scott's a gem, but we're still all best of friends. And, and the great thing about the eyes is we each have our own role. And I always say if the world was managed as well as the Ides of March, it'd be a very peaceful place. I'm the main songwriter, Larry's the, the producer, engineer. Bob Berglund does the the books and the ca calculations and the taxes and all the stuff yeah. that, yeah. you know. And Mike Borch, he's the schedule guy. He's the guy printing okay. up the schedule, the itinerary every month. And uh, we all have our, our jobs. Okay. Oh, wow. And uh, we know that have a popularity with uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, the Rocky story, of course, but what was your reaction when your it vehicle was featured in uh, in the movie uh, Lock Up, uh, staring by Sylvester Stallone? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that blew us away. You know, by that time, I was good friends with Stallone uh, because okay. of, of, of Rocky III and Rocky IV, mm -hmm. but, you know, that was such a treat for to hear the Ides of March in, in, in the middle of, of lockup, you know, when they're restoring the Mustang, which is oh, perfect, yeah. a perfect <laughs> vehicle, you know, and uh, it was a great honor for the Ides to be in a Stallone movie, uh, and, you know, I, I'm still really good friends with, with uh, Sylvester Sly, and, you know, the first time he called me, I thought it was a joke. It was, he left an answering machine message saying, hey, yo, Jim, that's a nice answering machine you got there. Give me a call. It's Sylvester Stallone, you know. <laughs> and I'm going, ah, oh, some joker is pulling a stunt stunt on me, you know. And I keep I sorting know. mails and listening to, to uh, messages in my machine. And my wife, Karen, says, who is that? Oh, so it's some joker <laughs> pretending to be Stallone, you know. And... Uh, she goes, you idiot, call him back. It just might be Stallone, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I called call him back. It was an 818 area code, which is a good sign. And he answers the phone, yo, <laughs> another good sign. And I go, this is Jim Peterick. Is this really Sylvester Stallone? He goes, hey, Jimbo, call me Sly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, and so here I am, kid from Borough in Illinois. Uh, he was already my hero because of Rocky one and two. And I go, so what's going on, Sly? <laughs> and, he go, and he goes, um, oh, I got this new movie called Rocky three. And uh, I don't want to use that going to fly now song. It's a nice song, but I want something for the kids, something with a pulse. Can you help me out? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> and, it's a uh, big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. You know what he said? Uh, but I'm going to send it. you a rough cut of the movie, and I want you to write a song that will outlive you and me. <laughs> and he goes, no problem, <laughs> Sly. So two days later, FedEx arrives with this big Betamax Pro uh, cassette. I had to go out and rent a Betamax Pro machine. Okay. And uh, got together with Frankie, uh, lead guitar of Survivor, and we watched that <clears throat> that movie. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Holy, I I said, this is going to be huge, you know, and I had my guitar around my neck and I was just trying to catch the pulse of the, the punches and, you know, Mr. T rising up and Stallone kind of <laughs> soft doing Visa card commercials. And I just started going just like that. And I'm trying to coordinate the punches with the chords. And I just go, And we just kept going, and I'm jogging around the neighborhood, scribbling down lyrics and singing into my cassette recorder. And we went to the studio, Chicago Recording Company, a few days later, and we cut the demo. And okay. Stallone goes, oh, my God, you guys really did it. You did write a song that's going to outlive you and me. <laughs> and uh, he said, there's only one problem. We got to use the demo you guys did because the deadline. So what a lot of people don't know is when, when you see Rocky three, 
you're listening to the demo version of eye of the tiger mm -hmm. and it's really good you know and uh but then we had to go back it wasn't on our label the scotty brothers so we had to re-record it and what took about you know a week to record the demo which ended up in the movie mm -hmm. it took us like two months in the studio in la to recreate okay. the 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 original version, which came so easy, now we're trying to recreate it and make it even better. And the one you hear yeah. on the radio, of course, is the one we recorded in L.A. like three months later. But um, that original one is still in that movie. Wow. In 1981, such, such a great story, my friend. Wow. Okay, yeah. you were talking about uh, Eye of the Tiger in movie Rocky Tree. Did you have the same inspiration to write uh, Burning Heart and Rocky Five, uh, Rocky Four? We're, we're on the road, uh, Survivors on the Road with Ario Speedwagon. We toured with them like <laughs> for three years with breaks, you know, because their management was the same as our management. And um, Frankie and I were sitting around uh, the pool and I don't know, it was like Baton Rouge or somewhere in the South. We got to call, hey, yo, you got to do it again. It's Sylvester Stallone. And uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, we got, I got a movie called Rocky Four, and I want a song with you guys again. So this time we didn't, you know, for the first song, I had the Tiger, we had the movie to inspire us. This time he sent us a script for Rocky Four. And that's cool. But it was a little harder working off a script than it was seeing the movie. But we rented a, a, a you know, we had the road crew bring a world sir piano into into the hotel suite, mm -hmm. and we pounded out the, this thing called Burning Heart, you know. And um, yeah. when we got back to Chicago, we recorded it, and you know, of course, by this time uh, Jimmy Jameson was the lead singer. David left the band. Dave Dave Bickler was, of course, the guy that sang "Eye of the Tiger" and just iconic voice and the beret and the whole bit, you know. But now we had Jimmy Jameson, uh, uh, just an amazing singer that we were blessed to find. We were auditioning all these yeah. singers, and most of them were not very good. And then Kevin Shelfont came along, and we almost and he's a great singer, uh, and we almost said yes to Kevin. And two days later, Jimmy Jameson came uh, to Chicago to audition and blew the doors off of everybody. And uh, <laughs> the first song we, we showed him was um, The Search is Over. And, you know, yeah. how can I convince you? You know, and I'm, I'm teaching it to him. And he gets to that point where now I look into your eyes. And his voice <laughs> cracked on eyes, yeah. you know. And I yeah. turn to Frankie yeah. and I go, oh, man, we better lower the key. And uh, Jimmy's famous line, which I'll never forget, he was such a sweet guy. He said, oh, man, give half a man a chance. <laughs> and we did another take, and he get, and I look into your eyes. And he nailed it. And uh, <laughs> that was the day we said, you're in the band. And Jimmy was uh, such an amazing inspiration to me as a songwriter where now I'd be writing songs with his voice in mind and things like <laughs> the search is over. And, you know, every singer brings out a, a different uh, emotion in me as a songwriter. And Jimmy was probably the greatest singer I've ever worked with. Oh, really, really. And when we have a total package in a, in a group, that, that's a perfect fit. And, all ideas growing up, you know. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, do you remember, Mr. Peter Rick, uh, what's the largest crowd you're, you've ever had with the former year of Survivor? Oh, man. So many. Um, <laughs> A couple of thousands? Oh, oh, my God. What was the biggest <laughs> one? I mean... I can't even I can't even remember it's it, the eighties was such a blur, a blur. Yeah. But I think it was overseas um that we got our biggest crowd probably in Italy 
the giant, <laughs> giant arena it must have been, I don't know, 30,000 people there just at the height of our popularity. And they're, they're, che they're cheering and they're singing Eye of the Tiger along with the band. <laughs> but of course, you know, we played LA, the Forum and all these great, <laughs> great venues. But most of them were like 20,000 max, you know, in, in America, um, which ain't, ain't hey, you know, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm, really? uh, but even mm -hmm. even the Ides of March, we, we did did big concerts as well and um, opened for Led Zeppelin at a, at a, at a big stadium in um, Winnipeg. Uh, okay. And that was really a, a, an awesome gig. I mean, we're huge Led Zeppelin fans, you know. Okay. And the Ides of March op opened for them, and it was, we killed it. We did so good. The, the <laughs> PA was shitty. Uh, it was supposed to be held outdoors, but it rained, so they brought it inside with a makeshift PA. We didn't care. We just kept going, you know. Well, Zeppelin was a little pissed off because they're used to great equipment, <laughs> you know. Nonetheless, they were great, and they premiered a song that night, a little thing called Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> and I and I go to Larry. This is going to be huge, you know. And Jimmy Page had his double double neck twelve six. And yeah, yeah. I mean, we were blown away. Yeah. And then after the show, Robert Plant invites the Ides of March to a big party in their penthouse suite in <laughs> in in, uh, in you know in Canada. And yeah. We showed up, you know, and um, we we're kids. I was 19. Larry was 20. We we're all kids. Yeah. Yeah, we've never course. seen the, you know the level of partying that was going on in that hotel suite. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, without going into too much detail, you know, there was, you know, the old cliche, sex, drugs and rock and roll. It was all yeah. going on right there in that suite, you know. And uh, good, you know? yeah, and we, we didn't we didn't even drink, you know. I mean, we were like all we did was practice and write songs, and we we're very dedicated to our craft. And so, at a point, we're we're going, oh man, this is this is not our scene. And we very politely um, said to Robert Plant, well, you know, thanks for inviting us, and but we're leaving. And we left, and we went across the street to a donut shop and we had donuts <laughs> and uh that's the party animals we were at the time <laughs> in the donut shop everyone yeah <laughs> woo. Uh, i remember in 2006 uh, my friend uh, you recorded a live uh, concert with uh, Pride of Lions in Belgium in front of uh, 17,000 fans yes. what was the uh, concert uh, has been recorded in Belgium, my friend. Uh, it, it was an amazing event. I mean, you know, I have to just start out by saying, you know, after Jimmy Jameson died, uh, passed away uh, at a very young age, I think he was 62 or 63, yeah. I'd all, already yeah. been working with Toby Hitchcock. Uh, and I knew that he was an amazing singer. But when Jimmy died, I, I really had to kind of recommit myself to... Okay. This is my new inspirational voice, okay. you know, and and Toby to this day is one of the greatest singers I've ever worked with. And what's neat about Toby, you now when I started Survivor, I was sure. going to be kind of co-singer with Dave Bickler, okay, but but and play guitar. But Frankie uh, didn't want that. He wanted me just on keyboards and writing songs. And he wanted to be the only guitar player. Okay, got it. But <laughs> he also wanted Dave Bickler singing all the songs. If you notice, on the very first um, Survivor album, I actually have some vocals and some guitar. Mm -hmm. But Frankie had his own vision of what this band was. One singer, Jim on keyboards, Frankie on guitar, Stefan on bass, but, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And 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 Mark Trubay on drums. Great. It was a great. As long as I could be in the songwriting um, capacity, that, that was my greatest passion. But when I finally formed Pride of Lions much later, this was kind of my chance to redesign that initial template of me okay. co-singing with the lead singer, in this case it was Toby Hitchcock, playing a lot more guitar. So I got to 
live that original survivor with Pride of Lions. And that makes sense because the 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 collaboration with with number was very different than Survivor. So and in Belgium, if you want to see a very good concert, honestly, everyone, I recommend this the show. That's just amazing. Live in Belgium, correct? <laughs> Live in Belgium. Yeah. Right. Live yeah. In Belgium. yeah. That was a great yes. show, and I, I remember there was this runway in front, and uh, Toby wasn't shy. You know, he went right out on that runway, and he's been <laughs> singing to the crowd, and I'm going, man, this guy's a showman, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was an amazing show. When I'm when listening, I'm listening and when, when I'm watching, watching this, this concert, concert, my, my mouth was just, oh, like that. <laughs> well. Wow. Oh, that's, a, that's a, such, a such a great experience. experience. So uh, in 2020 and 2021, you played with uh, an important music player. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Stick Slate Senior, Dennis the Young, can you share your experience with us? I, I sure can. One of my dearest friends, he lives li literally three blocks from here. Uh, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> He was my hero. I mean, when okay. the eyes were cutting our teeth, Styx was cutting their teeth, you know? Okay. And they had, Lady, when oh. you're with me, I'm smiling. <laughs> and uh, I look at Larry and go, man, this guy can really sing. And that no. was Dennis DeYoung. And, uh, he is one of the best. He is one of the best and, and still is. And um, we, we tried writing together back in like 2015 and you know not always things click or he had ideas that i wasn't crazy about and i had ideas that he wasn't crazy about and we shook hands and and we go maybe next time but next time came about you know i, I would say maybe 10 years later <laughs> and and we started i was in in europe at, and i started a song that i thought would be great for dennis the young uh, and I recorded it and I sent in an MP3. The, the this, is by, this is by this time, it was that age when you could send an MP3. Yeah. And Dennis goes, I really like this song. <laughs> and I said, Dennis, you've been sitting on your ass too long. It's time for a Dennis D. Young album. <laughs> and finally, he did get off his You dance. shake the tree. I shake <laughs> the tree, the Dennis, the, the Dennis tree. And, uh, <laughs> You know, like I said, he, he lives three blocks away, and, and literally, I would go over to his house, and we'd write there. He, he would drive over here, we'd record right right where we're sitting, and Larry would record the demos, and um, we wrote so many songs, he had to uh, carve it up into uh, two sections, 26 East, part one and part two. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was just too much to fit on one, one disc uh and we just really hit a vein and i just talked to him and a good friend of mine's band just covered <laughs> one of his songs and and he said would you mind sharing this with dennis so i sent it to dennis because i knew what a good job they did on this song and dennis loved it he said he called me he said jim this almost makes me want to do another album and wow. i wow I said, well, that's big. Do you say almost or yes? He said, big. Almost, almost. So who knows? There might be another D Young album, I'm, I'm hoping. And uh, his voice is still 100% there. All uh, right. When we have a chance like that, so going forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make it happen. I made it happen once. I'll make it happen again. Awesome. So we are now on our pre-closing segment so first of all thank you so much for your 25 minutes of your of your time it's once again very appreciated i give you a name in a few words tell me something about them all right sure the first one sylvester stallone stallone is a great guy um, i mean he, he was so humble I mean, he may come off like, you know, Stallone, you know, but he's really a very humble guy. And um, 
it was really funny because when we wrote Eye of the Tiger, mm -hmm. and you know, we got that inspiration from him for that, you know, in the movie, Rocky, you're losing the Eye of the Tiger. And that's when I turned to Frank and I said, if we don't call this thing Eye of the Tiger, we're really stupid, you know. <laughs> and at one point I said, Stallone, slide, do you want writer's credit for that, um, that title? Oh, no, no, I'm not a songwriter. No, no, that's yours, you know. That's how generous he was. You know, he could have made millions if he said, oh, no, I want a third of that song, you know. That's not him. He makes it on his own his own way. So I can't say enough about Stallone, Sly. And first time I talked to him, is this really Sylvester Stallone? Hey, Jimbo, call me Sly. Yeah, then I knew yeah. he was a regular guy, you know. A really good gentleman. The second one, Elvis Presley. Hero, a hero. I, I've never, I never met Elvis, but yeah. oh, you know, when I was four years old, he was the guy I was watching on Ed Sullivan with my sisters, okay. and I'm going, you know, I, I immediately, you know, I had a ukulele, and I and I had my mother in masking tape put Elvis on the ukulele, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, that's what a huge Elvis fan I was, especially those early days. You know, my sisters, we had a um, little record player. We stacked those 45s up. And, the, and a lot of the, the early Presley stuff, this was even before, like, Don't, Me, Don't Be Cruel and Heartbreak Hotel, was on the sun label. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't care if the sun don't shine. I'll get my loving in the evening time. Well, I'm with my baby. It almost like rockabilly, you know? Yeah. And I fell in love with yeah. us even, even before his first hit. Uh, black people, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the, he was born in Mississippi. Yeah, and his inspirations come, came from uh, from the black music. Totally. You can, you can hear it. I mean, it was a hillbilly singing black music, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The third one, uh, the greatest David Bowie. Oh, yeah, David Bowie. Well, Larry's worked with him. So, I mean, he's, he's had more firsthand, uh, you know, contact with David Bowie. He came to Larry's studio and recorded which which album, Larry? Or which? Yeah, the, the Glass, the Glass yeah. Spider uh, tour, all the audio, Larry mixed mm -hmm. uh, and got to hang with him. I didn't meet him at the time. I haven't met Bowie, but um, that was a brush with greatness that Larry had, and uh, I'm jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, Jim Peterick, yourself. Oh, him. I know I know him. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I, I never stop uh, in my music journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's my hobby, it's my passion, it's my love. My wife Karen tries to distract me with other interests, and we walk and we uh, travel, you know, and she expands my horizon. But, you know, every vacation, I always got my guitar and I'm always writing a song. And a lot of times, different latitudes, different attitudes, you come up with a different song when you're in Italy. Or, or Germany, or on, on an island like Costa Rica. We just came back from there. Mm -hmm. It's all different vibes, you know, and I try to tune into those vibes and turn it into music. Awesome. For ending, as usual, Nostradam. Ben, it's all about the French prophets. It's all about uh, Nostradamus. Oh, yes. And you will try to predict the future of our guests. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Peter Rick. Uh, almost 30 minutes with us. It was uh, very appreciated. It was huge. Uh, I predict to you, uh, eventually, the Eyes of March will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, I love your vision. I love your vision. And I, I, I'm sure hoping that. And add me for Songwriters Hall of Fame. I'm, I'm almost there for that, too. So... Uh, in Illinois, uh, well, it, it, it's somewhere as Hall of Fame is na national, but um, I, I'm already in the Hall of Fame in Illinois, as are the Ads of March. But 
you know, I'm looking for the national thing, if, if possible, in the Ides of March, too. So okay. anyway, it's really a pleasure talking to you guys because you're very knowledgeable and really fun to talk to. And I so appreciate it. Same thing for you. Thank you so much for your time. We we wish you ilty. We wish you all the best. And fuck the rest. Sorry for the word. <laughs> but it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. And have a great day, my friend. Goodbye. All right. Bye.